A common misconception of teaching is that we're all off at, you know, by three in the afternoon and we have weekends and we have full summers and really like if you're off at three, it probably means that you're just going home to do your work and on weekends, you're probably doing some last minute grading and on summers we have trainings or there's you're teaching summer school. So there's not really as much free time as they make it, but it's all stuff that we like doing. But it's not just, oh, those teachers are so lazy because they you know, are done by three and they do nothing else. Like it's definitely like work constantly or even when I'm not working, I'm thinking about my kids or, oh, that would be a cool lesson or I wonder what they're doing tonight. So you're kind of always still in it, even if you know, you're at home. Um, I think one of the most common misconceptions about the profession of teaching is that we're all broke and that our job is really hard. And um, I think that neither one of those are true. I think that if you look at teachers, um, you know, we work nine months. So um, that's part of our salary, but there are a lot of opportunities to make, you know, extra money as a teacher. And I think that the job isn't as hard as people might imagine. I know that the idea of 25 to 35 teenagers in a classroom is probably going to freak a lot of people out. But um, to me, it's, it's so much fun. And those kids, um, they really are really enjoyable. Um, they teach you more than you probably realize it that and maybe more than I even teach them or teaching me. And I think that those are things that people don't acknowledge and really realize about the, the profession of teaching. Some people think that it's just a seven hour a day, nine month out of the year job. And I think it can be that, but it would be very difficult to do it effectively. You do have to spend a lot of time on your own, planning, preparing, grading, and answering emails. Um, but another misconception is that it doesn't pay very well, and I feel that it can if you're in the district and you put in the time. Um, you can move up a salary scale, you can work overtime hours, you can do summer school. There are a lot of opportunities there. <laughs> Common misconception, uh, teachers get summers off. No, we don't. <laughs> we do not get summers off. Um, you know, speaking from experience, every summer I'm, I'm always thinking about how to do better from the previous year, you know, we reflection is such an important part of teaching and it's something that I take very seriously and I have a notebook of, you know, from the very beginning when I first started teaching, I have a notebook that has all my notes, like what worked, what didn't work, and I every summer I look through it and I'm like, okay, what could I do better? What other activities? What might be something fun? Maybe this didn't work, but what it's another activity I can do? Um, professional development. I have they have me teaching a new class um, next year in the spring. And so I have pro several professional development opportunities that I have to go to, training that I have to do to do that. Um, I have another paid professional development that I'm a part of where I'm gonna be training other teachers on NGSS. And it's like, nope, we don't get summers off. I mean, we, we get some breaks. Yeah, we're not in the classroom, but we're not, we're, we're still doing we're still teaching, you know, trying to figure out how to perfect our craft, try to be better. So no, we don't get summers off. <laughs> I think a common misconception of teaching is that it's babysitting. You know, one, actually, when I, was in, I was teaching in high school, the credential program. Um, I got an offer to teach middle school. And the, the high school teacher I was working with was like, that's just babysitting. You're not going to get anything done down there. And at first I was like, I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove you wrong. But um, you know, I think that some people think, yeah, well, you're just hanging out with these kids, you're babysitting them, especially maybe you're doing PE, you're doing social studies. That's kind of viewed sometimes as, oh, well, it's not major content. There are some serious things that can be happening there. And again, not just on a content level, but on skill level. How do you associate with people? How do you problem solve? When you're angry at someone, you can't just punch them in the face. You, you, you're teaching these kids how to become adults. You're giving them life skills. And I think at the end of the day, if, as a social studies teacher, kids aren't necessarily going to remember you know, who built this or when this happened exactly, but you can give them strategies and ways to be able to write and ways that they can converse with people and interact with their peers. That's going to be, you know, they call them the soft skills. Those skills are going to be things that transcend their education and, and go with them into life. 